Shachar from the arm block is going to the oh. share anymore. You only have Zoom. Right? That's Shachar al what it was called? Anyways, yeah. Okay, so then the Machloik is if a special wall needs to be built above a stream that flows through, right? Um, then if the stream is not big enough, then it doesn't need a Mechitza because it's not a Karmelis. And then the Gemara repeats that whole that whole Mishnah, and then we continue with the with, uh, Machloik is whether there's an opening of three or four, whether that's going to make your um, stream being able to carry in the Rosh Hashanah, right? And, and then we went through the whole sugi of the things resting on top of a wall. Is that considered uh, the, um, separating two properties? And it's also with the Raisa, with the Rabbanon, we differentiate between the Raisa and the Rabbanon. And uh, then we had a Mechitza around the porch, right? You can build a Mechitza around the porch in order to be able to draw water. Right? And then the same case that we said, which we're going to have again tonight, the two mechi- the two porches, one on top of the other, but next to each other, and they have to make an air with each other, otherwise both of them can't draw the water. Right? Then we said that uh, our Mishnah is going without the Shita, that, that you can't bend it, and it only applies, that Shita of bending only applies to the Kinneret, which is surrounded by mountains and cities and Karfefas. And then we sort of Hananiah said three things to the three coolers to the people of Tveria, right? The porch cooler, and then the fruits don't become kosher from 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 the dew, and then you're allowed to dry off your towel after Shabbos. Yeah, so that brings us to Daf Peches Amid Aleph, one, two, three, six lines down. Yeah, All right? That's what we're up to. Yeah. So Amar Rav Maravuna Loishanu. Yeah, we all we're all good. Where? Um, six lines down from the top, Peiches Amid Aleph. You posted any of the pictures yet, Yuri? I'll send it right now, I'm sorry. <coughs> I decided it's much easier not to carry in Shabbos. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pictures necessary for today, too. Okay, so I'm a rabbi, rabbi, So is it Maris Ayan if you're leaving that towel in the window? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I meant to comment. Is it Maris Ayan? Well, it's actually going to have to do that. We're going to be dealing with Marasayan in tonight's stuff too, with a lot of it. Um, what's the Marasayan that you want to say? Meaning, are you allowed? To, are you allowed to, if your coat gets soaked? Are you allowed to hang it up? You allowed to hang it up to dry? No, you're not. You're think, right. You're not allowed so, to. So, is this the same type of thing? Well, if he holds, um, you're saying because. Uh, um, well, if well, what's the marasayan that you're using a towel? I don't. Either that you're using a towel, or that maybe towel. you're wringing it out. You mean, you mean it's marasayan that it looks like you wash the towel and you're drying it? That's what you're saying. Yeah. I hear. Um, and why is that not marasayan? Maybe that's why he says manicha bechaloin because in a chaloin is not a normal place to hang the. The pies can bring that, like let's say you come in from a snowstorm or a rainstorm, right? And your wool coat or any coat is very wet. So you're not allowed to hang it up in a place that normally is meant to dry because it's a matter of sign that people are going to think you washed your coat, right? But if you hang it in a place that nobody would ever dry a coat, then that takes care of the matter of science. So maybe that's why he's saying to put it in the window because nobody would ever dry a towel after they washed and put it in a window, I think. But that's going to get your wall wet. You can't just put it on a banister outside? No, but if you put it on a banister, that's not a normal place to dry your clothing when you when you just washed it. So maybe that's why you put it in the chaloin. Nobody's going to think that you're hanging it out to dry it. Hear that? Does that make sense? I hear. All right. <laughs> not the greatest turrets in the world. We'll have to do meanwhile, right? Okay, we'll see more. We're going to get more into Marasai in, uh, tonight. Okay, so Amar Rav Barafuna. Now we're going back on the Mishnah. Loishanu Elulamalis. This, we only said this to fill up the pail. of a Lishpaich Aser. Right, but to pour out, pour out the water from off the porch that you're not allowed to do. Okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where did, where did we leave off last night? Six I, lines I, down. Six lines down. Peches Amar so again, I'm going to have a little bit of malice. I have a lishpech asa. Right? You now, you mean you have this hole in the porch in order to pour, pull up the water. So the Gemara is saying now is that you can only, you can only um, draw water up through there. You can't pour water up. On, on the couch? Yeah. 
Um, and the reason is because what's going to happen is your, your water that you're pouring out of the porch is going to eventually go out of the mechitza, and you're, you're, it's as if you're sending stuff out of the mechitza on Shabbos. So, what's the difference between this and, and uh, uka, which we're going to have in the next Mishnah? A uka is touched as a uh, cesspool, right? Which is basically where the sewage, right? The sewage uh, ends up, right? So there you're allowed to put stuff, you're allowed to put the, all the dirty water into that. So the Gemara answer is, Hani taimi, vahani loy, loy taimi. No, one is talking about, went by a cesspool, right? The water stays there, right? Vahani loy taimi. But here, here the water doesn't stop. When you're pouring it out from the porch, it's going to continue. It's going to continue flowing, and eventually, it's going to make it outside of the, of the rishos. Yeah, we'll get we'll get more into this after the next Mishnah. Igadamri, they say the opposite. Don't think that filling it up is mutter to pour it out is also elishpachnamishari. Right? Even to pour out water through this hole, dirty water is also mutter. It's That's like a cesspool, which we're going to learn in the next Mishnah. It's perfectly mutter. You know, it says no mouth. They say mahani timey, mahani loy timey. You would think that one of them is full and one of them is not full. Kamash malon that that it's not an issue, and you're allowed to you're allowed to do that. Yeah, fine. So v'chein shtei gezutrois zu zu lemalamizu. Right, that's the that's the typical the case that we've been having back and forth the whole time. Right, two 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 porches, one on top of the other one, and but they're a little bit. Uh, one is next to the other. This only said this by by uh, when they when they're next to each other. How we just we 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 spoke this out when we were learning this, but the, now the Gemara says it. That's only when is it that you need two Arabs, right? Again, you have two porches next to each other, right? One is over here, one is over here, let's say, right? And we're saying if they don't both make an Arab, then neither one of them is allowed to pull the water up from the from the river onto the porch. But that's only besmucha. That's only if they're close to each other. Alvuflegis, but if they're far apart, then al muteris, then the upper one is going to be mutter. Right? Why? And the upper one is right because the upper one is the one that has the has the has the mechitza. The Rav and this is Rav going with his shita, which we had a few times, the Rav, ain't A person does not aser on his friend through the air. Right? And the, and the way that the lower the lower porch accesses the upper porch is by throwing the bucket, right? Remember we said, because the upper porch is higher and further away. So he has to throw the bucket in the air, get it through that hole and down, right? So that is difficult. So therefore, they don't, they can't be part of the area, but the upper one could be. So Amar Rav, Amar Rav Chiyav, Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef, Amar Rav Aishi, Yesh Gezel B'Shabbos. This is very, this is a very interesting Gemara here. The Gemara thinks one way and then Mamish does an about face and and paint changes the Pshan the Gemara. So, so there's a new Gemara. Um, um, I'm sorry, but Rav Yosef, Rav Chia and Rav Yosef said in the name of Oishia, Yesh Gezel B'Shabbos, there's such a thing as stealing on Shabbos. V'churva machzil abaylam and a churva, a destroyed house, goes back to the owners. So what does it mean, Yesh Gezel B'Shabbos? What does that mean? So basically what it means at least what the Gemara is thinking now, according to Rashi, is that a person could, um, you know, you have an abandoned house next door to your house. A whole week you're using it because nobody's, why, why not? Nobody's touching it. So you go to the abandoned house and you use the abandoned house. So then Mamela on Shabbos, the Gemara is thinking that you can, you can steal it and you don't need an Arab. You can just use that abandoned house the same way you use it a whole week. But then the Gemara turns around and says, churva But if it's a, a churva, a house that's destroyed, that you have to give back to the Bailam, and you can't use it unless you make an Arab. Right? So the Gemara asked, obvious, Hagufa Kasha. This whole thing is a Kasha. I'm with Yesh Gezel Shabbos. You said that there is such a thing as stealing on Shabbos. Al Makanya. So you see that you are kind of that property next door to you. Right? And then it says, churva You put back the the destroyed house goes back to the to the owners. I'm a loy kind. You see, so you're not kind. So it's a stira. Is is it considered stolen or is it not considered stolen? So Hachi Kavan said, "Now the Gemara changes the pshat. Totally changes the pshat. Yesh din gezel b'shabes. There is such a thing 
as stealing on Shabbos, Ketzad de Churvon. How do you have a case of stealing? If you have an abandoned house that's whatever broken down next door to your house, right? So therefore, you have to give it back. Machsel Abayim, you have to give it back to the owners, right? So therefore, you are uh, um, now again before the Gemara thought that you're allowed to use the field next to you. Now the Gemara is saying, no, absolutely not. That's considered stealing, and you can't use it. So Rabbah said, um, we could ask on this from our Mishnah. You have two. What's, two, what's the half a minute to use somebody's thing without his rishus? What, what, what is that? Uh, so I, it's a good kasha. A good kasha. The only way I can understand that is if, of course. since that you're doesn't... using it a whole week anyways, you're using it a whole week, so why not use it on Shabbos but, too? But who, who told you you can use it a whole week? The guy happens to live, he has another, he doesn't live in this house this week. He went to Chicago on business. So you, who told you you could use it? Uh, but let's say a guy has, let's say a guy has the wetlands in back of, on back of Mahan and has been using it for eight years and nobody said a word. Yeah, he's waiting to get it rezoned so he'll sell it for $14 million. He don't want you to use it for nothing. You'll kill a duck and he'll lose the whole chance to sell it. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying if a guy doesn't say anything for you, what do I have to tell you? Don't use my stuff. I don't have to tell you to not use. Well, so, you but, can't but use Gemara... my stuff. You can use my stuff. Right, but the Gemara is saying because you're a very it's, benevolent it's, guy, you let people use your things. No, the Gemara so does. I'm, don't use, don't use no. me personally. We know that how nice I am. We're not oh, okay. we're talking about in the Gemara. <laughs> I think the pshat, that's why they he's nice. that's why they call him a gazelin. Isn't that why it's called Gezel? No, he's yeah, called he's a gazelin. exactly right. He's one hundred percent right. Who's... That he stole it during the week. If he stole it during the week, then once I steal something, I have rishus in it. It's mine. I have Wait, a right. So right? No, you're right. It's stealing it during, during the week is okay. okay? No, it's no, not okay. No, it's not okay. okay. He's a gazelin. Let's say a gazlin steals money and then he does something with it. He buys something with it. Is it his? He's a gazlin and what he bought, he, he bought. It's his. Right? I mean, there's all sorts of gemaras all over. Being Mikadash and Isha with stolen uh, mitzvah baba vera, all that type of stuff, buying lulav and Esser. But the bottom line is, is that you're a gazlin, right? But you're also... Uh, but you're also gaining. The and, it's, you're it's, also it's, it's, yeah. and the Gazan's going to want to make an Erev? What? No, yeah, one not, thing has nothing point. to do with the other. Yeah, Vadi wants to make an Erev. But... He's a from a Gazlin. What should I tell you? He's a from a Gazlin. <laughs> no, that's what it is. David, David, you never heard of a guy stealing in business and then he's a from a guy? You know, we were... of, course, of course I have. Okay, of course, so there's nothing wrong. wrong with taking that tzedakah. Absolutely not. One has nothing wrong. Not. One has nothing wrong. Just because the guy's a gazlin doesn't mean he can't, you know. And I give that <laughs> money to the guy. A little lesson from history. Guys, Al Capone opened huh? up the first soup kitchen huh? in Chicago in the 19, uh, after the 1949 crash. He oh, was the heir to the Al Capone. Al Capone. What, what did, did he, he do? What, what did he say he did? He opened up a soup kitchen for people who were broke after the oh, crash okay. in 1929. Okay. Fine. Taka? Fine. Taka? This, okay. is a, this is a well-documented mindset. All right. Very interesting. Okay. So you see, no, there's precedence. No, a, a gossip could be nice, too. That's the bottom line. He, he stole from the government. It's fine, no? From the government. It's fine, no? No, he stole from people. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. He was extortionate. What are you talking about? I don't understand. The whole point yeah. of our Gemara is that he does not want to make an Arab. Does not want to make an Arab. Well, you mean he doesn't want to, but he wants to carry. He wants to be do it. He wants to do it properly. No, we're telling him that he has to make an Arab. He's either if he doesn't. But he, he, the point of it is, he he doesn't want to do it. Okay, I don't know. It's questionable. Okay, maybe. Okay, take him. <laughs> okay, but fine. So then, okay, so now the Gemara says, Omar Rav, Masvina Nashmait, and let's ask a Kasha from our Mishnah onto this Gemara that we just said. Right? So the Gemara says, Zula Malamizu, right? Viam and Yesh Din Gezel Beshabis, Amaya Suras. If you say this, there's a Din Gezel Beshabis. 
right? Meaning the Ghana has to give it back. Amaya Surois, right? Why are they Osir? Right? Meaning the Gemara's thinking now, the Havamina is that the lower guys are using the upper guy's porch without permission. Right? I think that's the way you understand it. They were using it without permission. When the guys go to sleep, he'd say, hey, okay, now let's get out the water. Take the bucket, throw it up to the other porch, let it go through, and they're using it without permission. Right? So, what? what? No, during the week. Why do they have to go through his porch during the week? Because they don't have a hole in their porch. They don't have a Just hole. Throw it down. What? Throw it off the side. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what that's what that's what the Gemara's thinking. Right? So then why this why should they ask that you didn't have a right to go to the upper porch? So I'm Rav Shesha, so my skin right. This is what Rashi brings down before. No, they made the mechitza on the porch as partners. The lower guy and the upper guy built the porch mechitza as partners. So if that's the case, right, then they should do it for the tachtayna too. Thank you. Right? Um, no, I'm saying, uh, what's it? What's this kasha? Um, oh, so now no, I'm sorry. No, if let's say, but we said if the lower one makes makes mechitzas, then they don't need to have an eruv. But if that's the case, and the lower one did make did did make mechitzas, right? Then we said we said that the the upper one doesn't need, but they should also need because they both have access to each other. So the Gemara answers, Kivin the Asal the No, since the bottom porch made their own mechitza, Galitaita da no bahadoch loy nichale. Then they're saying, Hey, I got my own, I don't need you. Right? So that's showing that they're not part of the upper one or the lower one. They're considered two separate entities, and therefore um, they would not need Eru. Yeah? Fine. Okay, so that's that. Now, next mission. Yeah? Chotzer. So now we're going to deal with, till now we were dealing with drawing water, now we're going to deal with spilling out the water. Now we're dealing with dealing, I don't know if is sewage the right thing to call it, I guess, right? So chotzer, arba amas. If you have a chotzer that's less than four amas, you have four amas by four amas, as we're going to see. Yeah? So that's a very small chotzer. Correct? So ain't shoykhan b'sochim mayim b'shavas, you're not allowed to spill out water into that chotzer on Shabbos. But you have to make a cesspool that could hold two sa of water from the hole, right? Um, from the hole that's and, and below, right? So basically, you have to make sure that from the opening of the cesspool and down, there's enough room that there's two sa of water, and then you could spill out the water in there. Right? What does from the hole and down mean, as opposed to the cholios? I yeah, as a yeah, that's what I think. But I ma- I don't know. I imagine all the not all cesspools had cholios, but I don't know. But that's what it seems. I mean, basically, oh. the hole has to fill two saw of liquid. Then you're allowed to pour stuff down there, right? We're going to see in the Gemara. Can you put as much? Can you pour as much much water down there as you want, or only up to two saw? Right. So, anyways. And that's whether the, you, this cesspool is either in the inside of the chatzar or outside of the chatzar. But if the cesspool is outside, meaning it's already in the Rosh Hashanah, um, uh, you need to put a, 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 a roof, right? Um, but if it's on the inside, you don't need to put a roof. Meaning if it's in the Rosh Hashanah, the cesspool, so the water is going to roll out from the Rishus Hayachid, from the Chatzar. It's going to roll into Rishus Haram. So therefore, you got to build some sort of roof so that it looks like, so that it looks like uh, it's like a, a hacker, that that's not, uh, that the water is coming from the Rishus Hayachid, right? To make it into Mokka right? Yeah? Fine. That's that. So how do we... What's the problem? Flushing toilets is not a problem? Who? Flushing toilets. Flushing toilets is is well. It's it's all Rosh Hashanah flushing toilets. No, it doesn't go out. It goes. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't. It's in Rosh Hashanah. Okay. No. no. Flushing the, toilets. Where does the water go to? I'm saying, but it's it's. I would imagine it's at least more than ten tefachim below the ground. 
No. The pipes. Uh, Suntag has a different ister when it comes to flushing toilets. Huh? I think if Avi Suntag said you flush the toilet, it causes the water in your house to go backwards into the hot water tank. I don't know. That's advanced plumbing, so I don't know. <laughs> if you go tune in, in the morning, because we're learning these hey, signals now in the morning. Your back flow protection. Your back flow, uh, you know that that's not true. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 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 that, that can, uh, you, put, you put your hand on the water cup. Put your hand on the pipe. Put it, go in the hot water heater and you'll see. Parents is a certified back flow prevention. Uh, oh, I forgot. Him. I totally forgot about that. Anyways, okay, but whatever it is, I think the, the our toilet is all down to Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll get more to we'll get more to this discussion in the Gemara. Rabbi Lozab and Yaakov Aimer. Rabbi Lozab and Yaakov says different. Biv, shu komor arba amas b'shusarabim. If you have a a biv is a pipe, right? That's that's covered over. That goes four amas in b'shusarabim. Shayvchin l'saychay mayim b'shabbos. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So biv shu komor arba amas b'shusarabim. If you have a pipe. That's going for Amos and Rishus Ram. Shaykhun the Saykhun Mayim Bishabas. Then you're allowed to pour water into that on Shabbos. Even if you, you put it on a roof or a yard that goes 100 Amos, right? You're not allowed to pour it on the Biv. But you can pour it on the roof. And then the water goes to the Biv. So you hear what the Chacham was saying, meaning. This Lachaira, and we're learning this in the morning, I go, right, Rabbi, this is Groma. This is Mamish Groma, right? So they say, even if even on a roof, right, or a chata that's a hundred amas long, you're not allowed to pour the water on the biv, right? Meaning the biv is the pipe, and that pipe is running the length of the yard, even if the yard is a, a hundred amas long, or it runs on the roof, even if it's a hundred amas long, right? Um, you're not allowed to do it. But you can pour it on top of the roof and then the water is going to go to the biv. Right? Because the problem is in the first place, since that's the way water normally runs off the houses, so then that's going to go, it's going to go into the Shasarabim very strong. But if you pour it on top of the roof, eventually it's going to take time to get down to Shasarabim. It's going to slow up. So it's not going to mamash be going, you're not going to be directly involved with this water going from the Rishus Ayacha to the Rishus Right? What, then they go. What, so what is exactly this, is this Machlechus? Is this Machlechus, like, according to Sumchus, where the Kaiche Kegufa, or Kaiche Kegufa, what is going on here? I don't think that that's, that's the Machlechus. I think it's just a matter of how involved are you going to be in this water getting to the Rishus and, and if you are completely involved, what's the Isser? You didn't take it out. There's no way it's uh, going on here. Well, you're causing it to go out. That's kaicha again. It's well, it's grama. I mean, I get it is kaicha. Yes, I don't. I'm not sure what to do with this kaicha. It doesn't seem like the 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 the, the they're worried about kaicha here. It seems like that's considered a. It's considered. I mean, no, they they're not worried. I mean, it's kaicha, and they're saying that it's awesome. Right. That's what they're saying. Yeah. So let's see how the Gemara, let's see how the Gemara goes on. Let's finish the mission. If you have a chotzer, right, a yard, and uh, what we touch a chsadra portico, right? They must starve to arba amas. Meaning we're saying that this whole thing is if it's in a chotzer, that's four amas. But you have the 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 also is four amas. And you have two diutas, you have two uh, porches also. Right, and there's less than four tvachim on the ground in between them. asu uka asu uka. One makes an uka, and one does not. Right, meaning I guess there's more, I don't know how many cesspools they're putting in a in a four tvachim uh, yard, right? But okay, so some made a uka, some didn't make an uka. Um, so in those that made the cesspool, they're allowed to pour their water out into it on Shabbos. Those that didn't make it are not allowed to. 
Fine. Okay, so let's see the Gemara. My timer. What, what's the reason, right? If you have a, a chatzah that's less than four amas, right? So why is it that you're, uh, why is that you're not allowed to uh, pour out your water? So Listen to this. A person uses two saw of water a day, right? When it's within four amas, so a person wants to put the water there and, the, you know, to put it over the dust to make sure that the dust um, doesn't go all over the place, right? We had this once before in Shabbos. No, we said that that's why in the baseball stadiums in the middle innings, they take the dirt, they take the water and they put it onto the dirt. Yeah, you hear parrots is mush somewhere freezing in the country. You hear that? That's what they do that for, to make the dirt, the dirt, I'm assuming he's on, right? To make the dirt, uh, to pound it down. So here, so when it's four amas, so the person, when he pours his water, he's very happy. And, but he, he's happy that it stays in the Rishus HaYochid. If some of it happens to go out to Rishus HaRam, fine, right? But Pachas Midalid, but if it's less than, if he has, he, if he has a yard that's less than Dalid, um, um, Shaifchen, yeah, he just pours the water and eat of it, so then if, meaning again, if it's bigger than four Tvachim or four Tvachim minimum, he doesn't normally pour the water. He sprinkles it around so that it helps out his yard. But if it's less, I'm sorry, if it's, no, if it's less, he's just going to pour it out. So if he has a cesspool, then fine. If he doesn't, then he, then it's, then it's not a problem. I'm sorry. Then it's also Reb Zera Amar Dalar Amas Taimi Pachas Mi Dalar Amas Loi Taimi. If it's Dalar Amas, right, then uh, it's gonna go. It's, uh, it's gonna absorb all that water into the ground. Pachas Mi Dalar Amas Loi Taimi. But if it's less than four Amas, then it's not gonna absorb it into the ground. Yeah. So now, what's interesting though? How many? Anybody know how much two size? Somebody brought this up to me this morning in Yeshivarakwe. How much water is two sa? In practical, in like in gallons, anybody know two sa? Google it, something. Um, two sa. Two sa. How much is a sa in gallons? I spell sa. S e a h. S e a. Okay, whatever isn't it is. A saw, isn't a sa um, six carbon? Yes. So it says here one is, biblical saw is 1.66 dry gallons. Whatever, US gallons. One saw? One saw is 1.66 gallons. Is that a difference between dry gallons, wet gallons? Oh, it says dry gallons. I don't know what dry gallons means. On Wikipedia, means they say one is two saw. One saw is two gallons. One saw is two gallons? So that means, okay, so each Where? person is using four gallons oh, of water. It doesn't say that. The Gemara is saying, the Gemara is saying, um, nine quarts. Yeah, I would say that's a whole lot of water for each person to use every Shabbos. No? Wait a minute. It's not only drinking water. What? I know, it's for everything. It's certainly not drinking water. <laughs> It's Seven, water, that's a lot of drinking water. It's water. It's it's water for the washing your hands. It's water for going to the. It's a little less than two because it's seven point okay, three liters. And I'm 7. saying for each person, each person was saying each person uses that much water every day. That's a lot of water to schlep. They didn't have pipes. I mean, they didn't have running water there. I mean. Yeah, but you still need a gallon. It's not that that's much. That's why they needed to get water every Shabbos and do this whole concoctions thing. Right? Yeah. That's why you have all the mice of the Sadiqim schlepping the water for the... The water carriers. The water I was carriers. just thinking that. I was just thinking that, right? They must have been spending half their day schlepping water. No? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but well, it's, a, it's an interesting yeah, my, thing. When my father lived as a, as a kid in, in Knesset Aleph in Nachlaut in Shalim, there was a big, there was, there was a well in the middle between all the 15 houses, and the ladies used to go and, and take water out of the well every day. Right. It's interesting, yeah. And then, you know, the truth is, well, this is, no, the Chodah Zev, this is even without drinking water, because it's saying that you got to get rid of two saw of water, right? Okay, whatever it is. 
Either way, so going back, so there's two pshatim here, right? So why is it that um, a yard less than four amas uh, has to be four amas to pour it out, either because the person's happy with it, or four amas is going to absorb all that water. Okay, my benayu, three lines down from the top. What's the difference between the two terutzim? If it's longer and thinner, meaning we're saying it needs to be four tfachim by four tfachim the yard. What happens if it's, how does it go? Six, eight by two. Yeah. Right? Eight by two is the equivalent of four by four, correct? Yeah. yeah. Right? Let's say it's eight by two. Is that enough or is that not enough? Right? So, according to the Mandomer that says that it needs enough to, to swallow up, the, the, the ground needs to be able to swallow up two salt water. So what's the difference? What it is? Mm-hmm. Right? Four by four. But if it's because... Uh, a guy who wants to do his gardening, a, a, a yard that's not four by four is not hush of enough to guy, for a guy to do his gardening and to let the dirt go down. It's right? still my, it's not hush it's still my yard. Like I'm saying, even if it's a small yard, it, it's my yard. So that's what we're thinking. That, I guess the Gemara is thinking that four by four is a hush of a yard. Two by, two by eight is not a hush of a yard. I guess. I don't know. Right? Depends where it is. If it's next to Saks Fifth Avenue, it's, it's worth something also. <laughs> I get, you know, it's a good point. That's a good point, right? It should be Lechayra Tyler Tully and where it is. Not anymore, um, Rabara, not anymore. I was waiting for somebody to say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, yes. Uh, now, not even near uh, Trump, Trump Plaza, whatever, Trump, uh, yeah. Um, but what's interesting, because this com- you know where this comes up a lot, because the minimum, the minimum room for a, a mezuzah is four amas by four amas. But what happens if it's a room that's only, that's not exactly four by four, it's two by eight, or, you know, whatever the, whatever the different uh, things are. So then the shilas doesn't need a mezuzah because it's not really livable. Meaning four by four is because it's livable. Right? Yeah. Um, fine. I'm sorry, I keep saying tfachim, it's amas. Did I keep saying tfachim or I was saying amas? No, you said Amos. Amos? Okay, yeah, fine. Okay, so then Tanan, weiter. Tanan, Chotzer, Vach, Sadra. If you have a Chotzer and a Chotzer, it's Tarf and the Dalar Amos. So we said, right? So we said the Chotzer and the Chotzer combined to be Dalar Amos. So according to Reb Zayra, that it's, it needs the four Amos in order to absorb the, the water. So that makes sense. Who cares what it's, whether it's in a portico or whether it's in a yard? There's four amas. The El Rabba Kasha, but according to Rabba, if it's only two amas of, of ground, he's not gonna he's not gonna care to take care of that. Yeah. Um, so Tirgamar Tirgamar of Zaira, Ali the Rabba Bechsadra Malechas Apnei Kol Chatzer Kula. Now we're talking about an Achsadra that goes along the entire Chatzer, right? So since since it goes along the entire Chatzer. So the, the chutzer and the uh, portico are are at least four amas long, right? And and the width together is four amas. Fine. Okay. So Toshima, chutzer shein badal and amas al dal and amas ain't shayv kolasech and mayim b'shabbos, right? So we said you're not allowed to pour water into a yard that's less than four amas. Bishlam el rabba nicha. That fits according to Rava el Rav Zera kasha, but according to Rav Zera it's a kasha, right? Um, so that yeah. means you have to keep that water in your house? That's what it sounds like. Until, yeah. until after Shabbos, you got to keep the water in your house, which I imagine their houses weren't all that big either, right? And they were dirt floors, no? Um, or not necessarily. We're not talking that far back. They didn't put it in the cesspool? No, but that's what we're saying. If it's the Chatzar doesn't have Dalit Amas, then you're not allowed to. So that means it stays in your house. That stays in your house, yeah. Right? Very, very low property value if you only have less than Dalit Amos because you can't, it's, it's not a desirable place anymore. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Am yeah. I missing something here? If this you're only missing, if you're, uh, Gershon, if you're only missing one thing here, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> no, I know about some things that I'm missing. Because I'm but missing I mean, a whole lot of things in this Gemara. <laughs> yeah. In this particular, it doesn't have to stay inside. It's in a bucket. You can put the bucket outside. You just can't pour it down. Are you saying if you have an Eruv? Yeah. I mean, so you're, you're putting, you're putting two saws of water? You're putting two saws of water in a bucket? It's in a bucket? In a bucket. It's, pretty, in it's, it's not on the floor. Where do you think it is? No, but it's got to be a pretty large bucket. You're putting, you're putting it in two buckets. 
four buckets. Who cares? You're putting it in Simon's plate that he just ate supper in. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, uh, right? He's putting it in a big barrel in the yard. So that it's already in the yard. It's not in his house. That's the point. I mean, right? Yeah. Um, okay, what are Anakonami? So, but you, if, it's, if it's too soft per person, you're right. It's taking up a lot of room. Right? But anyways, okay. So, Bishop Rabba Nicha, the Rabzeir Kasha, according to Rabzeir, it's a Kasha because what do you mean? You have the area. To, why can't you pour the water out? You, it, four Amis by four Amis is enough to absorb all the water. So, I'm like, Rabzeir, how many Rabban and he? No, that's going according to Rabbanon, right? Um, that meaning the Rabbanon are the ones that hold that you're not allowed to pour the water out because they're afraid that it's going to go out into the Rishos Rabban. And therefore you need four Amas by four Amas like this, it'll get absorbed. And our Mishnah is going according to Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov, right? Because he holds that the, if the pipe can absorb the water, then it's then it works. So Gemara says, Why? Why is what's why are we being daicha him that he has to say that the Mishnah is going like Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov, meaning the ratio of the Mishnah? Because he had a makasha from a Mishnah. My area, the Tani Chatzah, she Chusa. Why are you saying that a Chatzah? It's less. Listen, the Chatzah she ain't but Dalal Amos or Dalal Amos. Why are you saying? That it's a chutzr that's less than uh, um, that it's less than four by four. Why don't you just say chutzr she'ein b'dalat amas al dalat amas? Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Is the background noise a little loud here? Sorry. Uh, four four nieces just rolled in here for Shabbos. I didn't cop their coming so early. I would have locked myself in the room. Hold on, please. <laughs> you think yeah. that's bad? You have them for the whole Shabbos. I, I know. I, I tried to get one of the guys in Yeshiva to find me a place to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Come to me. Anyways. Um, so listen, to, okay, so oh, again, Omar Rav, Masnisen Kashazi, because he had a Kazar in the Mishnah, my area, the Tani, Chatzar, Sheep, Chusa, why is it that you're saying, it's saying a Chatzar has less than Dalit Amas, right? Listen, Chatzar, Shein, but Dalit Amas, Al Dalit Amas. Why don't you say four by four, right? Again, Right, Reb Zayr is saying that if it's if it's longer than thinner, then it's going to be a problem. Why don't you just say say then say less than dollar amas by dollar amas? Hello, love Shmami. No, the Reb Lozav Yaakov must be that it's Reb Lozav and Yaakov Shmami. No, so that's why he has to say it's Reb Lozav and Yaakov. So now, they, but the kasha is like this: the safe is Reb Lozav and Yaakov. But me, the safer Reb Lozav and Yaakov, Reish Olav Reb Lozav and Yaakov. If the safe is Reb Lozav and Yaakov, then the lachar the Reish is not right. Again, the safer. Of the Mishnah is Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov says that you're allowed to pour it out a hin and a hair, right? So that's that's the if he's the safest and the Rach is not him. So you want to answer is cooler Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov. No, the whole Mishnah is Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov. This is how you have to learn the Mishnah. A chutzah that does not have dalit amas ain't shayvchin l'sachemayim b'shabbos. You're not allowed to pour water into the shabbos. But if it is four Amas, you're allowed to pour. Shir Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov Oimer, Biv HaKomer, Dalar Amas, Shasar a Biv that has a cover, right? That, uh, what do we call it again? A trough. Conduit. Conduit, right. That's That's got the cover over it. Dalar Amas, Shasar Abim, Shoychul, Shoychul, Mayim, B'Shabbos. Then you're allowed to pour the water into it on on Shabbos. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why isn't it Zereya? If it has Dalan Dal Dal, you can pour it in the Chatsi. Yeah. You mean, I, I, the, I, I don't know. I wanted to work on it. I didn't have enough time to work on it. I'm assuming that there's no grass there. That's the only thing. You know when we have the Shiloh? Doesn't the Shulchan Aruch say even if there's no grass, you're not allowed to do it because it's something micro? No, but it, it's, I, I'm assuming that it's Mamish, a dirt, dirt place. I don't, but I, again, I don't know. I didn't really work on it. But what this is very Negea, when those that have shlaks on their sukkah, on, on, on sukkahs, right? And then it rains. And then you want to you wanna take off the shlak. So then the water's running off from the shlak and it hits the ground, hits the grass, right? So if it's right after it's a heavy, heavy rain, okay, so what's the problem? The whole thing, we're going to get into that in a minute. But... Uh, but if it's not, then it's a problem. So what some place can say to do is put down a tarp next to the sukkah like this. The water runs onto the tarp, 
then it runs off the tarp and then onto the grass. But that's not a Hitzah issue. We're dealing here with carrying it out into Rosh Hashanah. That's Does anyone actually do that? Does anybody actually do that? Put a tarp <laughs> next to your sukkah? Yeah, I don't know. So the, uh, run, the water what goes on. <laughs> does anyone actually do that? See, the only thing, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I the same two guys who made the error from the second floor to get a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I think, the, I think, I think most people's sukkahs are near cement. Right? I'm giving you a balabatisha terrace now. Most people's sukkahs are near cement. So the sukkah, when they pull off the schlock, it goes onto the cement, which is essentially the same thing, right? I think or, most people. Or we can consider it like a virtual semi, you know, like the two and a half walls by the sukkah. So as long as a little bit, we assume that the rest is there also. And yeah, for those that heard half and half what Parrot said, he's referring to yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. <laughs> Okay, so let's see about there. So if you have this biv that's covered over, our mission is like Hanani, the Tanya Hanani, I'm a filu gag mea ama. Even if you have a roof that's a hundred amas long, you shouldn't pour on it. Because a roof is not meant to absorb water, a roof is meant to repel water. Right? So, um, and he says, you're not allowed to pour it onto the roof. Tanakama says, you can. That's only during the summer. You can pour v'shayna and do it again. You don't have to stop my timer. When it's, when it's raining, a person wants the water, right? He wants it there. Um, meaning, I don't know if it means... Um, meaning he doesn't, he doesn't care. It's it's a little it's interesting. He's saying, what do you mean he wants it? If he wants it, then that should be a problem, right? Doesn't means it doesn't mean that he wants it in the way that he wants. I mean, he doesn't care if all the water stays in his property because it's the rainy season anyways. His whole yard is muddy and disgusting. So what's the difference if he adds more water onto it? But in the summer, he wants that water to get out of his yard. Why would you want your, your yard to be all muddied up in the summer? See, Yaakov, yeah, Rebbe and Zisos Alasham used to tell me from her mother when she was a little girl in Poland, and the little shikses would make teas and say, Oh, it's raining on your Shabbos again, it's raining on your Shabbos again. She said, You know why it rains on Shabbos? So you should have blotta for Sunday, yeah. <laughs> Very What's good. Blotta, on Sunday? blotta means that they shouldn't be able to go, blotta means uh, mud, 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 mud. mud so that they shouldn't be able to go out on Sunday. Shh. All right. Omerle Abaya, Bare Shaifche, and the Adam writes a shield of a Katani la Yishpech, but we am Shaifche in the water. A person wanted to be absorbed in the ground, right? But we said, La um, Yishpech, you're not allowed to do it. Meaning a person wants his, I mean, wants it. He doesn't care if it gets absorbed in the ground, right? So why are we saying there that we're afraid that it's going to roll out into Rosh Hashanah? So what are you concerned for? If you worry that it's going to destroy his his chotzer, it's already destroyed, right? Because it's the rain. It's the rainy uh, season. And if you're going to say because maybe um, the the pipe is going to um, pull water. And then you're always allowed to do that. Stam tinar is right? Um, most most pipes um, do use rainwater. Yeah. Okay. This is an interesting thing. Meaning, we want to make a gzera. We want to say maybe we should make a gzera that he's going to think that pipes. The reason why this guy put in pipes is so that he can pour his water out, right? And then they're going to think, oh, you're allowed to always pour water. From your Rishusayachid that let it flow out to Rishusaram, which is not true. It's only in the winter, right? So, right, and so it would be a Maris Ayan thing, right, to get back into what you're discussing. So they're going to answer, Stam Tsinoira is Makalkamheim. But that's not a problem because pipes, everybody knows that pipes are for meant for rain, not for, not for uh, plumbing, right? Obviously, that changes nowadays. So then when somebody sees you pouring, they're not going to say, oh, you see, it must be 
He's pouring water out on Shabbos, so it must be you're allowed to do it. No, they're going to think that it's it's rain that's rainwater that's coming out of there, not uh, not uh, what's it called, not uh, the sewage sewage, I guess. Maris ayin or it's also alacha. No, Maris, you want to answer it out to Maris ayin. They want to answer it out to Maris ayin. Someone's going to see it and think that it's mutter. What? Yeah. Someone's going to see it and think it's mutter. Correct. You know what the practical um, contemporary um, comparison of this is putting on your water, I think, putting on your, what do you call it? Uh, sprinkler system on Shabbos. I, it's not exactly the case, but that's, can somebody have a sprinkler system go on on Shabbos? Right? Yeah, why, what, what do you mean? Because uh, people think you turned on your sprinkler on Shabbos. But, oh, but that, realistically, that, most people have sprinkler systems now, and they're not turning. Oh, them right. On so Shabbos. that's the thing. But in the old days, in the old days, most people did not have sprinkler systems. Meaning, the guys that that were first to get their sprinkler system, right, became a big marasayim. Oh, this guy's watering his grass on Shabbos, right? So even nowadays, the pais can say that if you're going to run a sprinkler system on Shabbos, it should be done at you know 4 a.m. before anybody's up, so that people people shouldn't see. And then uh, and then think, right? But uh, okay, that's also yeah. stam a different issue. Is there marasayin on the derabona, right? In the beginning of Basa Bechalov, it's a whole issue. Is there marasayin on the derabona? Not only marasayin on the deraisa, right? Meaning, if you're eating uh, by chasanas in the old when they first started serving pariv uh, creamers yeah. by chasanas, right? So you had to you had to put to make sure you put the pariv creamer thing on. The container, so everybody knows. But that's for a meat meal. For a chicken meal, maybe you don't, you don't need it, right? And nowadays, bechal, everybody, uh, everybody knows that it's that it's uh, this par of meat. Uh, yeah. You mean okay. The so with, with the the the, the pudding chicken and the almond milk. What? Well, David, it would be a a, if you're yeah, right. 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 Yeah. What are you saying, Rabban? I was just if you if you're Rabbi Brown or Rabbi Kalish's neighbor, then you can't run your water you, because they're always up, so you couldn't That's, run the, the sprinklers. Rabbi system. Kalish is not up more than me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so I won't. So either. from your neighbor, I won't have a sprinkler system next. Yeah, year. yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, also, exactly. I highly doubt that those two people are kosher to anyone of anything. Oh, very good. Very good. I'm, I'm, but I but I think they also probably don't know what a sprinkler system is too. But we're not gonna. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a Rav Nachman. They probably just think it's gonna rain. It rain. Hey, it rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm a Rav Nachman. Yeah, halavai by all of us. <laughs> well, well, I heard. heard Amara, Rabbi, yeah, what's his name? Rabbi Nevinsol say, says that being down the cup's chos is completely bidiyeved. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know why? Yeah. Because he said lechatchila, nobody should judge anybody. But if you're oh, gonna judge, good. then be down the cup's chos. <laughs> very good. I good like part, that huh? part. That's a good word. That's very I love good. that part. Very good. Yeah, I got to write that one down. That's a very good word. Yeah. It's, it's Emes, Mamash Emes. Yeah. So, Omar of Nachum, but you might say, Shomim, during the rain, Uka Machsik Sosayim, right? So, the Uka can hold up to two saw, Noisim Le Sosayim. So, you're allowed to put up to two saw into the, into the cesspool because it holds two saw. Machsik saw, so now here's it gets a little technical. If the cesspool is only, you're a cheap guy, so you only installed a one-saw cesspool instead of a two-saw cesspool, then then you're only allowed to put one-saw of water in it. it. But during the summer, if you have two-saw cesspool, you can put two-saw in there. Saw ain't nice and like call Iker. But in the summer, if you only have a one-saw cesspool, then you just knock yourself out on, on Shabbos. Right? Um, yeah, again, shot is because during when it's raining, you don't care if it overflows, but in the summer, you don't want it to overflow. So, so the Gemara asks, Why not also at least put in a saw? So, Gemara answer, no, because we're afraid of you. Why you put in a saw? So, you might put in Sasayim. If that's the case, then we should also make the Xera. No, meaning again. If you're afraid that you're going to put in more, then you're allowed to. So why don't you make the exam Moshek Shomim? Hasam, my nechash. So what's the chashash? Yimishum kilkul. If it overflows, what do you care? Like we just said, homekalka v'kaiyeh. The whole yard is one big blot, as you said. 
right in in the in the winter and imishum gzei rishem yom rutzin noy rishol ployni mekalayek mayim and if you're going to think people are going to think that his pipe is bringing out this water um stam tsinor is mekalchen and stam stam pipes are are not there for rainwater not for that so amr abai hilko chafilu kur vafilu kurayim if abai says if that's the case right then even a kur or a kurayim then you could they, which is a lot more a kur is thirty sa. Right, or even Quraim, then you could do it because who cares? It's the winter. The whole thing is it's a uh, lot of water. Thing is destroyed. That is a lot of water. Yeah, I don't know what kind of Shabbos you're gonna have if you're. I mean, if you're using out. two saw on a, on a day, right? So thirty well, saws, what? A two person. weeks worth of water? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I, I, he's saying that. I think it's like a. I don't know if it's a guzma, but just like saying even tons and tons of water, you could do it because it's the winter. Who cares if the whole yard is shot anyways? So nobody cares. He made a big right. kiddush. What? He made a big kiddush. Made a, a, a very big kiddush. Yeah. That's it. Fine. What? Huh? Okay. The chain stay do you stay do you zu Right. If you have two, uh, how do we touch you toys again? Uh, um, what do you call it? Also like porches, one opposite, but they're they're opposite, and one made a made a cesspool, one didn't. So I'm a rabbi filu irvu. Even if they made an Eruv that they're allowed to carry into the Chatzar, right? So it's they're not allowed to. Amar le Abaya, my time. What's the reason? Elam Mishum Mishum Nefisha Demai. If you say because it's too much water, right? Because there's one cesspool here that holds two sa. You have two houses. Each house has a minimum of two sa. So now that's four sa going into a two sa cesspool. But Tanya. Achasli uka v'achasli gistera. Whether you have uh, an uka or a gistera, which is a, a broken kli, or meaning like a half, uh, what do you call it? I think like it's a half pipe. Bricha is a, a pond vareva or a boat. Even though you filled up that much water before Shabbos, you're allowed to pour it. You're allowed to pour out the water on Shabbos. Right? I'm sorry, you're allowed to pour water into them on Shabbos. Right? Oh, it's going to flow over, but we don't care. So what's so so what's the problem if you have four saw going into the two saw cesspool? It's coming from two different houses. And this was made of shot. Now we're on to the next element. It's only if they didn't make an Eruv, but if they taka did make an Eruv, then each one of these porches can pour all the water they want into the cesspool. And if they didn't make an error, why can't they? And we're afraid, no, if they're going to allow them to pour water, then they're also going to, if they don't have an Erev, they're going to carry the buckets out there too. Meaning, if we're if they don't have an Erev together, we're going to still let them pour out the water. They may end up just going downstairs or whatever, outside and carrying the actual buckets, which they're not allowed to do. Right? Okay, that was a shtickle, a hard duff. But this next one is uh, not not as hard. So let's, uh, okay, a few more minutes. This is not a hard one, we'll, we'll get it done. Hadron Allah, Ketem Mishtatvin, yeah? So Kol Gaga Seir, right? All roofs in a city, because we had most of this already. So Kol Gaga Seir, all roofs that are in the city are considered uh, Rishus Achas. They're considered all one Rishus. Yud, Yud. As long as one roof is not higher than another roof by ten tefachim, or lower than another roof ten tefachim, Divir Rameir. So Rameir is saying an interesting thing. You have all these houses in the in the. Like Rebbelezer the Mili. What do you mean? When Rebbelezer the Mili says it's all what? No. Oh, that to say, he says it's all. What does he say? To carry throughout the whole city or something? On the on the poor on the roof. So right. So that's a, yeah. That's what we're gonna say here. That's what we're gonna say here. But that. Yeah, that's not this sheet though. It's the it's the next sheet at the end of the mission, right? You mean to carry the knife that you're talking about, to carry the knife on Shabbos from one roof. Yeah, very good. So here we're saying that even though the houses, this is the way Rashi explains it, even though the houses are considered separate entities and each one needs a chatza together, right? But the roofs, since nobody goes up to the roof too much, so the roofs are all considered one big happy family, and therefore. You don't need an Eruv and you can carry from one to the other. Except Rameir has an interesting Zera that if one roof is 10 Tvachim above any other roof or one roof is 10 Tvachim below, then that roof is not included and you're not allowed to carry. 
totally the opposite. Each roof is considered its own rishus, and that's it. Reb Shimon Oimer, Echad Gagos, this is the one from Reb Lozon Hila. Echad Gagos, Echad Chatzeres, Echad Kafefos. He's even, he says all the roofs and the yards and the, even the open fields up till two sa, rishus, rishus achas hein, lekelim, sheshavs, lesoichen, it's considered one big rishus, but only for the kalim that are already in them before Shabbos. The loy lekelim, sheshavs, lesoichen, bayis, and not for kalim that are in the house, right? Meaning, right, we had this a couple of times. Let's say they didn't make an Arab, but you left a, a Kli in your yard. So any Kalim left in your yard by Shkia Friday night, then that Kli can be carried onto roofs, it can be carried onto Karfefus, into yards, anything like that. Yeah. So again, so we basically have three sheets in the mission. Rameir has all the roofs you can carry from one to the other. Chacham say you're absolutely not allowed to carry from one roof to the other. And Rab Shimon says not only are you allowed to carry from Roof to roof, you're allowed to carry from roof to chutzer and even to big empty fields. Okay. So Zakti Gamara Yosef Abaya Barabin Rab Khanida Barabin, the Yosef Abaya Gabayu. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of abayas here, right? For Yosef Kamri, and they were saying Bishlam Rabbonon Savri Sidarabon Ho Kashem should the Yuran Khaluk and Lamato, Kah the Yuran Khaluk and Lamala. Just like the houses on the bottom are considered separate entities and they have to make an Arab, so that the roof also. Ela Rameir, my Kasava, what does Rameir hold? Ikasava, Kashem Shed Yurun Chalukan Lamata, Kach Yurun Chalukan Lamala. Amai Rosh Hashanah, and if he says that they're all split houses on the bottom, so how can they split on the top? Then why is it a, that's not Rosh Hashanah? Vikasava, Ein Chalukan, right? Ein Chalukan, and if you say that they're not, the Chalukan Lamala, the Yud Rosh Hashanah, that anything above 10 is one Rosh Hashanah. Filu Gagavaya, Sarva Namach Yud Nami. Even a roof that's above 10 or below 10 from the others, it also should also be included. Meaning, why are you eliminating any roof that's below 10 or above 10? Did you not hear what Yitzhak says? Anytime you find two Rishuyas, and they're really one Rishus, you have a, a, a stand, that's a Rishus HaYachid, that's 10 Tochim high, V'roch of Dalit, and 4 Tochim wide, also L'Kasa V'lov, you're not allowed to put things down on it, why not? G'zeira Shema, G'zeira Mishum Tel B'Rishus HaRam, it's a G'zeira for a, 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 a mound, that's a Rishus HaRam, Hachanami G'zeira Mishum Tel B'Rishus HaRam, so here too it's a G'zeira, basically what he just said, it's a, it's a very interesting G'zeira, Rameir holds, in your yard, let's say a guy has in his yard, and this is actually Negea, I don't think we pass him like Rameir, right? But he says like this, if you have in your yard something that's higher than 10 Tvachim and more than 4 Tvachim wide, you're not allowed to put anything down on it. Why not? It's a Rishus HaYochid. It's my Rishus HaYochid, right? Why can't I put something down on it? Because he's afraid that you're going to get used to putting things down on something that's 10 Tvachim and 4 Tvachim wide, and then you're going to be in Rishus HaRabim one day, and you're going to take off your hat, it's a hot day. You're going to take off your hat and you're going to lean on, let's say, a mailbox, which is 10 tzvachim high, 4 tzvachim high, which is Rosh And you're going to put it down on Rosh Hashayach. And now you just I mean, maybe you should maybe Yochid. you should never carry because then one day you'll carry without an Eruv. So you should never, ever carry even with an Eruv. I then agree you might come you. one day to, to carry without Much an Eruv. It's learn an Eruv. <laughs> Naftali Liner agrees with you. Exactly. Cut out cut out a hundred days of I don't life. know. And a Hanami. I, I don't understand Rameir's Rameir's Gazera. It's wild. It's wild. He's saying, again, just to make it clear, he's saying that if you have a a a uh let's you say just you have a killed off all your outdoor kiddish that you've been having for the, the whole time. He's so gonna make sure he has low kiddish. tables. He's gonna make sure his tables are less than 10 to him high. That's all. Right, I'm saying, let's say you have a swing set. According to Rame, you have a swing set in your yard, right? You want to put down a kid on top of the swing set. If that swing set's more than four tefachim wide, ten tefachim wide, according to Rame, you can't do it. Why? Because you may end up doing that in Rishus Arabim, right? So Rame is saying here too by the roofs. If you have a, even though all the roofs are considered one big Rishus, but if one roof is ten tefachim higher than the other, or one roof is ten tefachim lower. Therefore, we make this gezera kicks in. This gezera. Maybe you can't put. In. Maybe you can't go on the trampoline. Could be, according to the mayor. Could be. I'm saying we don't pass him like, as far as I know, we don't pass him like. When you mayor. bought your trampoline, you saw the <laughs> mayor's picture on it. You saw his hechsha. He didn't give a hey, No, I, my wife, I didn't hold like him. My wife oh. did. <laughs> don't, so don't, what do you call it? Yeah, don't go nowhere with no Rameir Balanes Pushka near there. That's all. Right? 
<laughs> but anyways, but that's his gezeira. So sover me no afilu machteshes afilu gigas, right? So then they thought that uh, maybe even a machteshes is a grinder, not a grinder, whatever. Uh, what you grind things in, or a or a or a gigas or a barrel, right? So Amar lo vabai hachi Amar mar lo Amar meir el amud vaamas harichayim. He only said it by a pillar, right? Or a um, the bottom of a grinder. Because people keep that as set things. Meaning, it has to be something that's set in the ground. If it's something that's movable, then that he's not going to say. Right? So if you happen to have a table or a chair, you would be able to put it down on that, even if the table's 4 tfachim wide and 10 tfachim high. Right? Because... You, you move that around. But it's only a putting it down on things that don't get moved. Okay. Oh, so then, but you have a wall that's in between two yards, the kavua, that there ain't nothing more kavua than a wall. When you could say, according to the mayor, gigin, gagin, I'm sorry, right, that each one is considered its own rishus, my love, the Shari Latuli Derech Kaisel, isn't doesn't he mean that you're allowed to carry it through the wall? Derech the Kaisel, so not the a the wall. No, he doesn't mean that you're allowed to put down the stuff on top of the whole, on wall. No, you have to have a uh, you have to have a, a door in the wall in, in the wall. Then you could go through the wall, right? Meaning. Reb, uh, Reb Meir is holding that all the chatseris is considered one, and all the roofs are considered one, all the kafev is considered one, right? But there's walls in between, so that means you can put it down on top of the wall. So we're saying no, you cannot put it down on top of the wall because Reb Meir has this kazeira. Yeah, okay. I guess I guess it's late, so we'll stop here. I want to do a little bit more, but it's a little late. Okay, we'll stop. What's we'll stop tomorrow? here. Four o'clock tomorrow, right? That's uh, four what o'clock. Four twenty-seven is is candlelight. So 427. Uh, four o'clock is tomorrow, and then what's the Shabbos? Uh, we'll take the boxing gloves out and figure it out. What time are you stopping tomorrow? We'll stop 420. 428. 428 is okay. Yeah, it's gonna be a rough day. Four o'clock. Sheesh. Okay. Doing, All right. Are you, are you if we don't work on the on what time it's gonna be mozi. That's going to be our entire shear, Arab Shabbos. You'll, you, see, Yaakov, you'll just You're spend right. less time with your nieces tomorrow. <laughs> you should write. You remind me. I got to make sure I don't do it in the dining room. I got to move to a different room. You do it outside. It's yeah. 70 degrees so, tomorrow. And maybe outside do we time. have uh, Shabbos afternoon here? Yes. Oh, I don't even know what time Mincha is in Yishifarako. I figure uh, uh, 3.30. What about 3.15. 3.15. No Shabbos? We don't have a, we don't have a Bakaira, Paris. We'll hire somebody. I thought he said Mets. I don't know. Did uh, Gershon was working on it? I don't know if he got anywhere with it. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in with my kids. All right. Come in. What was I working on? Not what you. Not you. Oh, what? I was listening to my son. All of a sudden, I hear out of the blue. No, Gershon no. Was working no. on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Zagazunt, everybody. Good night.